Uh, good morning and welcome to another episode of Crime Pace of Botany Dozen. Coming to you near uh, Fangaray, New Zealand, up there in the north part of the North Island. Looks like Wangaray. You can pronounce it Bangarang too. So I've been calling it Bangarang. Look at those roots on that Podocarpus totara. Epic tree, epic conifer here. All right, a lot of Podocarpus diversity in New Zealand. Podocarpus uh, are conifers that basically evolved in the Jurassic. Uh, and there's a lot of bird dispersal going on here, especially in New Zealand. There's a lot of bird dispersal going on with the family. A lot of their quote-unquote cones look like little berries with conspicuous fleshy arrows attached to them. Uh, but especially in New Zealand, where there are no native mammals except for bats, uh, there's a lot of bird uh, bird ecology in a lot of these plants. But look at that massive tree. That is by far, that's a fraction of the size that this uh, species can get, Podocarpus totara, the totara. So uh, anyway, let's uh, check out some of your plants going. Look at it. See, they got these. They got these nice uh, foot cleaning stations for the phy phytophthora, the quote-unquote water molds, which look like fungi but aren't. They're uh, well, phytophthora is the genus of Irish potato blight. You know, they're chromista. They're more related to brown algae. Yeah, see, sterilize the bottom of your foot. You know, in terms of long run, what's it going to do for the the? pathogens killing some of the trees here maybe not that much but it's it's better than nothing oh how careless of me i just assumed without giving it a closer look this is not cordyline it's another monocot fresenetia which is in pandanese pandanese produce infructescences that look like little cones you can see this climbing bastard another cool monocot and there you can see the uh, remnants of one of those infructescences looking like a little cone There we go, nice illustration of New Zealand's only native palm, Ropolostylus sapida. A relatively cold tolerant palm, they, they do very well in San Francisco, which is where I first uh, came across it. Look at that bulbous, that inflation at the base of those petioles, Look at those leaf blades. This nice beautiful Podocarpus totara behind it. And Phyloclatus, Trichomonoides, another cool Podocarp, look at that, the quote unquote celery pine. How those, how those phyllodes, those leaves, look. These photosynthetic, photosynthetic stems, technically. Look how wet the ground is. You got mosses everywhere, bryophytes everywhere, caprosma everywhere. And then standing on the edge of this brook, looking up at this uh, Podocarpus totara, you can see this epiphyte, massive epiphyte, hanging up there, Colospermum hestatum. Looking just like an Astelia, Asteliaceae. Look, there's one in flower up there. Epic forest. So wet, so cool and wet. Look at this interesting, interesting branching structure on this uh, phyloclatus. Tied itself in a knot. Wonder what happened. Got bent back somehow. Phyloclatus trichomonoides. Another cool podocarp. There's the leaves right there. There you go, Agathis australis. Looks like a spindly little bastard, this guy right here. It's a very cool conifer, though. Judging from those leaves, you initially wouldn't think so, but uh, you can see the parallel venation, the quote-unquote primitive structure. See, there's no cross veins. More akin to needles uh, than true leaves. It's directly opposite each other on that waxy stem. So judging from how spindly this is, you have no idea that they can attain such massive sizes. So, uh, this is, of course, the Cori tree, which is one of the most... Uh, one of the most famous trees in New Zealand. The Critium capressinum rimu, another famous conifer of New Zealand. Unlike that cori that I just showed you, which is that cori is in a monkey puzzle family, Ericariaceae. A uh, rimu is in uh, the Podocarpaceae, which I'm sure I've ranted about enough so far. All right, this again is a young one. They grow very slow like many podocarps do. They're bird dispersed, the cones are. The cones look like little berries. Okay, kind of like a, like a yew or a juniper. All right, bird dispersed, and uh, they can get uh, very large, right? very old ones, and they've got this beautiful weeping structure to them, too. Probably wouldn't grow anywhere in the United States except coastal California and northwards up into the Pacific Northwest. Look at that Freysonetia just climbing up that tree fern, that Cyathea. Pandanaceae is a really cool family with a really bizarre flower structure, and a lot of them have those aerial roots that kind of project down, kind of the way that some corn roots do, project outwards at a 45 degree angle. Pandanaceae from the order Pandanales. Unmistakable flower structure when you see it. Again, looking like little cones. Those inflorescences. Look at this thing, just climbing up, just sprawling everywhere. Taking, slowly taking over that Cyathea tree fern. 
Oh, this is hideous. Look at this. Aceroe rubra. Looks like a prolapsed rectum. All right, Phylaceae, the stinkhorn family. All right, this is the fruiting body of it. It's just, you know, mycelium's just down there decomposing a bunch of mulch and stuff. And then here you got this fruiting body covered in spores. God, it smells absolutely terrible. I'm trying to get flies to come stop and take a whiff and carry its spores off somewhere else. Jesus Christ, then we got this weirdo too, which just ate a sugar beetle. You can see it's a species of Bavaria, which is actually used for biocontrol. The genus Bavaria, you can see it's had its way with this beetle right here. But, uh, you know, some of, the, some of the pot growers use a Bavaria uh, bassiana as a form of biocontrol. All right, you know, so you can avoid the non-toxics uh, in their greenhouses. That thing is absolutely hideous. Aceroe rubra, looking like a pink anemone. Look, there's a fly going into it now. Yeah, go in there, buddy. Do your little job. Oh, God, it smells awful. Actually, it's not a fly. But it's an insect of some kind. Absolutely hideous and heinous and hilarious. You know, I just, the, the smell alone is enough. Do you really got to go with the extra accent of the, the shit mimic? I mean, look at it. It looks like someone took a dump on it. It really does look like a weightlifter, like someone was trying to bench press more than they could do, and they just prolapsed their own rectum. That is heinous. All right, I mean, it's quite beautiful in its own way, too. It looks like a little anemone poking out of the forest floor, but Christ, buddy, we get the point, huh? You'll have no trouble getting flies in there, and it just smells rancid as hell, too. It smells... I mean, I've smelled a lot of human shit in my life, especially living on the West Coast, and that certainly does a good job at mimicking human shit. Esplenium's a great genus of fern. You could, you could uh, diagnose it by those uh, linear groove-like sori, and this is a Splenium gracilinum. Look at that wonderful black rachis over there. And there's uh, those little bulbils it forms. So you could take that off and plant it and it becomes a separate plant. Nice form of clonal reproduction right there. Ah, another nice podocarp with the feathery leaves, the feathery shits, Dacrocarpus decritioides, Cahacatea, they call it. Probably pronouncing that wrong, but that's okay. I'm American. You just use that as an excuse everywhere. Use it as an excuse for bad behavior throughout the world. Every time you act like an annoying asshole, I'm American. People understand it kind of, oh, okay, I get it. See, they say, they, they know. A lot of podocarps have dimorphic leaves, too. They look much different when they're young. You can see this is forming a nice tree. You got the Freysonetia climbing up. But they can get massive, too. Some of them can get quite large. You can't even see. You got Ropolostylus down there, Freysonetia. Wonderful forest there. Look at the hanging gardens, the hanging epiphytic gardens. Got a nice uh, asplenium right there. Asplenium flaccidum, just danglers. You got a bark on that podocarpus in the background. And you got the uh, peperomia. Peperomia urviliana. There's the inflorescence right there. See that little yellow spike? Succulent, epiphytic. You got that, you can see really see that succulent trunk on that branching. See the part that's branching off right there? Same family as Kava, Piperaceae. Somewhat basal, somewhat towards the bottom of the angiosperm family tree, so in a relatively old lineage. And got orchids and all this stuff. Nice stuff on everything. A lot of nice stuff in these forests. Look at all that Podocarpus totara, just beautiful telephone poles. Coniferous telephone poles. Got Ropolostylus tree ferns, the Cyathea. It's the Ropolostylus, that palm. Such wonderful forests. And then right here we got a mature cori. They can get a lot bigger than this, but there you go. Agathis australis, monkey puzzle family, Ericariaceae. All right, very old lineage of conifers. It used to occur in the Northern Hemisphere. It's thought that uh, Petrified Forest National Park in Arizona, those petrified logs are members of the Ericariaceae family in the genus Ericarioxalon. But it went extinct from North America quite some time ago. Now it's, uh, now it's basically stuck in the southern hemisphere except for a uh, horticultural plantings they get ericaria ericana planted all around seattle the monkey puzzle tree look at the bark on this beast oh uh, three genera in the family agathis which is, has like 12 species i think new caledonia australia new guinea and then uh you got the wolemia which is just was just described outside of sydney discovered and described outside of sydney in the early 90s and you got of course ericaria 19 species the center of diversity is in uh, New Caledonia for Ericaria. You also get them in South America and Australia as well. That bark is incredible. God damn. Get Agathis robusta in Australia, another species. 
Look at those little papillations, little wart, little warty texture to this. And again, this is like a, this is an adolescent. They can get a lot bigger than this. Very resinous. You know, again, those leaves look like angiosperm leaves almost. But you, you know, you start messing around with them, you slit them open, you get that uh, break of me. It's got that resinous smell, a coniferous smell. And of course, they produce cones, really beautiful cones that just disintegrate on a branch. Well, you can see it's just got that epiphytic astelia growing up. Astelia, of course, is a huge genus. It's very species rich down here in the southern hemisphere. It's just so incredible. Look at it. Ah. You like filmy ferns? Hymenophilaceae? The filmy fern family. Say that shit loud. <laughs> Say that in a row. The filmy fern family. Hymenophilum is the genus here. Look at that wiry black rackies. And of course, uh, I believe those fronds, those leaves are only one cell thick. That's the name filmy fern. So if you got hymenophyllum growing, you know you're in a very wet place because they do not tolerate desiccation, a.k.a. drying out. You got a wonderful iridescence to them, too. Look at that, huh? Oh, look at that bark. Look at the bark on a Tatara. Jesus Christ. Fibrous. You know, this probably got logged to shit when the Europeans got here. You got bryophytes on everything, little mosses and what the shit. Wish this camera filmed better in low light, but that's okay. I'll take what I can get. Such a such a lovely tree. They could be grown in coastal California too. They're not really invasive. I saw seedlings coming up beneath the parent tree in the duff at SF Arboretum, but they don't seem like a tree that likes dry summers. Look, just a massive astelia up there. <laughs> just growing epiphytically in his beast. See, there's the leaves on that Podocarpus tatara. Hey, almost looking like uh, kind of a fur. Some sort of dug fur, maybe a yew. Very yew-like. They kind of whirl around that stem. How do, shit the, how do, how do these brush-tailed possums eat that? They've been really defoliating them, really going to town. Look at this guy. Hoharia is the genus Malvaceae, the cotton family. In the actual Malvoidae subfamily. Because remember, there's a bunch of subfamilies in out of cotton family Malvaceae. Anyway, it's not flowering now, but that's because it's winter and down here and nothing's flowering. You know, it's June. So uh, anyway, six species in this genus. Uh, and they get the white flowers. All right, with a very Malvaceous looking fruit. All right. And then that little uh, woody capsule fruit. Of course, they can get rather large trees. You can see we're on a walkway right here, standing about 20 feet above the floor. So anyway, you go, oh, here you Look at it, that's a beautiful forest right there. The native palm, the Rapala stylus, the Podocarpus totara, none of the Cori in here. Maybe hey, there's a little one. But just the color of that, that, that totara is a really wonderful plant. And again, those get big as hell too. But there, a lot of them are getting knocked, knocked back by uh, brush tail possums, which were brought over from uh, mainland Australia and Tasmania. They just defoliate them. Crazy to think we're in a place with no mammals except for bats. It was the same deal in New Caledonia when I was there. Look at the texture on it. You can really see how it's a conifer. Looks like it should be in the Cypress family, Cupressaceae. But it's in the Podocarps. If you don't know about the Podocarps, you've got to come correct. They occurred in North America 100 million years ago, but uh, I think they were mostly wiped out in North America after that uh, the dinosaur extinction. After that big rock hit the Yucatan. Anyway... Short video, that's all I got for you today. Have a good rest of your evening. Go fuck yourself, bye. I think we're about to get pissed on here, it's raining.